It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And today I am tearing into my bougainvillea pot. This was my pride and joy for a couple of years and now it looks terrible, which is what happens. You know, time passes and things get overgrown and things die back and it, they lose their, their shape. And it's important to be able to identify for yourself when the time has come to make some adjustments. And for me, adjustment means just rip the whole thing out and put it back together. So a couple things to consider before you tackle that is one is the time of year. We are coming into summer. However, this is a sheltered area in my garden that gets a lot of shade. Doesn't get any real direct sun until late in the afternoon. And here in um, Southern California, my area in Chula Vista, late afternoon usually means pretty mild temperatures in the 70s. So I'm not concerned about the plants burning or, or stressing by me handling them in this way at this time of year. Uh, also, sidebar, there was a gorgeous sunburst aeonium in this pot and it was so pretty and I realized that, you know, I wasn't enjoying it that much because I only come back here to pick up Bentley's poo and to deal with my gutters from time to time. So I didn't really get that much enjoyment out of it. So I donated it to the Coral Reef Project. It was the only sunburst in the whole installation. And in my enthusiasm, I was, you know, I was going to take it roots and all, but the stem cracked. So I ended up using it there as a cutting. And then that just left this gnarly stem and all this gross um, undergrowth. This ruchia also has never bloomed in this pot because it just doesn't get enough sun. So I want to rehome this anyway. So we're going to start by just pulling things out. This is just um, a little graptocetum ghosty toughest plant in my garden. Uh, the ruchia, I think this will come out intact. See, the aeonium actually, because the head of it was so heavy, it threw off air roots that penetrated the ruchia. And so, you know, this is all going to come out as one big, yep, one big thing now. Here were the roots of the aeonium. They were, as you can see, quite shallow but she threw off air roots into the ruchia to support herself, to support the weight of the plant, and also as a means to take in extra hydration. So smart girl. This ruchia, I shouldn't have any problem um, working in to other areas of the garden where it'll get more sun. I really love this plant. So here's another little grapto. And I'm just going to set that aside for now. And okay, now there's no turning back now, is there? I mean, in this, this looks like a lily AC. Uh, you know, maybe an Arctic. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a topsy-turvy hybrid that I got from Oasis. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it is really happy in this pot. So this is one that I'll definitely be be replanting in here just maybe not as a rooted plant because it is getting a little run amucky so we'll take and remove all the dead leaves tidy it up you know this is the time also to consider blooms you know these are beautiful blooms that I want to encourage but if they were covered in aphids, I would remove them. Also, if you feel like the plant, the Echeverias in particular, like the sea dragon here, no aphids on that yet either, the blooms really take a lot of energy from the mom and can shorten the lifespan of the plant. So, you know, if you really want to support the lifespan of the plant, you might want to take off the blooms a little sooner rather than later. But that's absolutely your call. Okay. Let's set that down. Ugh. And then these aeoniums that I put in here, just absolute fillers. These aeoniums, they grow like weeds in my garden. 
Good Lord, that's got such a thick trunk. I do not have enough time in my life to clean this plant, so I'm just going to be lazy and cut it. All right, set that aside. So much detritus. Ew, ew, ew. Feels great, though, to get after this stuff. We've got... Uh, what is this? This is Echeveria harmsii, another super cute plant that I really, really love. Um, it's not really doing much in here, so I'll set that aside for elsewhere. Now this Aeonium kiwi, another one of my favorites, you can see I've already cut it for parts for various projects or to do something with it. And look at how leggy and stemmy it is. That's not fun. I don't like that. So this is coming out. Remember that aeoniums are summer dormant. Kiwis are tougher than some aeoniums, but avoid working with them as a cutting in the summertime, if at all possible, unless you are in the land of milk and honey like me, um, and you're working in, you know, a protected en environment, then it's okay. Like, I'm going to work with it as a cutting. It's not a problem. But for some of you in some parts of the world, it would definitely be a problem. So think time of year. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and cut these up now. All right. Oh, as we go deeper, we've got Crassula platyphyla all mixed in here with God knows what. So I think, let me get after this Aeonium first. Woo! Okay. These are going to go back in to this pot as cuttings. And the platies, you can see here too, where this has stretched to try to find the sun. And it's, <laughs> it makes no sense. This just looks terrible. I don't like that. I don't like that one at all. Um, some of these are standing more upright and are making more sense to me and will find a home somewhere else or maybe I can salvage them and put them back in this pot. Let me see if I pull them all up like a ponytail. Let's see what I've got and look at how I'm I'm pulling the soil off of the roots too so I don't have to add so much new dirt to this pot. Yeah, see, I'm sorry, guys, but that's a mess. So these will be reworked, cut up, put in the Garden of Death to regenerate in the hopes that I can make a plant that makes more sense. So these will not be making the cut. They will not be going back into this bougainvillea pot. It's so fun to see what you find, too, after a couple of years. So many of the things in here I just kind of threw in as I was going about my business. Oh, I have this cutting. Oh, I'll just throw it in the bougainvillea pot. And everything just took off and looked so great for so long. Okay, now we're getting kind of in the meat of it. And, you know, this, this arrangement is starting to crowd the air conditioner. It's affecting the plants. It's causing them, you know, to, to grow funny, too, as they hit that air conditioner. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to get this giant stand of aeonium out of here. You know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to take the aeonium out. Look at how good it still looks, right? I'll just leave the aeonium in, do some tidying, pull out all the dead leaves. Proof that I really am making this stuff up as I go along. Extremely rewarding to do this. Okay. All right. Now, this... Fred Ives, though, is coming out because it was crushed against the air conditioner. And you can see this bloom's done. So let me get rid of that bloom. I'll let this one ride. I don't see any evidence of aphids on it. This is another one that grows like a weed in my garden. And then I've got some little ghosties here, tiny ones. 
that I will probably work in somewhere else. This is an example of an etiolated plant. This one had the misfortune of being planted in the very back of the pot where it got zero sunlight and was very cramped. So, you know, it didn't give up. It kept climbing and climbing and climbing until it reached the light. So, you know, if you're okay with the look of that, Godspeed. Um, if you don't live in the land of milk and honey and you're very into propagation and you want to make your own plants, many of these little lower leaves would be viable as propagates. Just pinch off the leaf, lay it flat on a bed of dry soil, and right here at this point, if you're lucky, in a couple of weeks or so, you'll see a little baby plantlet come. Um, so you can take off the leaves and propagate if you want. Then take this little top piece here, which is what I'm going to do. I'll take that little top piece and I'll put it in like over in my little um, tackle box or maybe in the gutter because that's a perfectly viable little plant. Okay. All right. So since we've decided to let the aeoniums go another year, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? Makes my life easier. Oh, here's a stem of I don't even know what. Just a, a stem. Something that I must have stolen for an arrangement. The head of it. Oh, here's another one of those little ghosties that was reaching for the light. You know, and it's fun to give these plants new life, the ones that, you know, aren't really maybe looking their best or giving you the most in the place where they are, you know, to, re, to work with them as cuttings and put them somewhere else where they're going to have a chance to thrive and look their best is pretty fun and rewarding. When we do uh, the next Walkabout Wednesday, you know, we'll keep up with some of these cuttings and I'll show you where I decided to house them and you can watch with me as they thrive in a microclimate or an exposure where they're going to be a lot happier. Now, this, I've got a Fred Ives back here that actually looks really good and I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it ride in the back right there. It is not bothering me. It's happy. So we'll just let that go. Then over here on this side, I've got a sedum morganianum, which I'm not going to bother. That's my one of my pot spillers. This plant, it grows pretty slowly, but it looks so awesome as it drapes over the edge of the pot. So I'm going to let that ride too. And then we've got an aloe noblis here that's also not offending at some point it's going to have to go because it's going to get too big in here and just literally crowd everything out but right now you know it's okay not terribly offensive yeah okay and then this haha <laughs> this little ghosty is just such a crack up and I wouldn't dream of pulling it out. This is so fun what this plant has done, how it's come cascading over the edge and it's split into one, two, three heads. Look at the little air roots. Yeah, and Greg says, look at the little air roots here. So it's doing everything in its power to not only survive, but to thrive. And look at these cute little ones on top. This is all part of one plant. So that's just too cute for words. And we are absolutely going to encourage that. All right, so this didn't turn out to be nearly as big a project as I thought it was going to be. Since I've decided to let some things ride. Now this is, you can see, I've got a bougainvillea in this pot too. This is planted in really, really well-draining soil. There's a tremendous amount of volcanic rock mixed into this uh, be because of how many times over the years I've top dressed, then dug it up, reworked it, and re-top dressed. So, you know, I just keep, keep turning more and more volcanic rock and creva and whatnot into the soil as I go, which just adds to the aeration. This 
pot also gets a pretty significant amount of fertilizer because I like a blooming um, bougainvillea and bougainvilleas are really heavy feeders. So I use, um, since this isn't a food source, I do use a commercial fertilizer on, you know, in here, usually bare three-in-one systemic um, where I'll treat for potential pests as well as feed my plant at the same time. Okay, so what's happened now though, as does with older arrangements, you'll note that the soil level has dropped precipitously. Uh, gosh, Bentley. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry about that, guys. He's inside, but very loud. Um, the soil level has dropped precipitously low as, you know, it's decomposed. So I will be adding more soil. Now, this is just dirt that I pulled from around the corner. Miscellaneous can dirt, I call it. And you'll see all kinds of stuff in it. There's little pieces of perlite. There's vermiculite. There's wood shavings. This is pretty standard stuff here in San Diego. So that's what I'm going to put backfill with to raise the soil level, which the succulents don't really care too much about, but the bougainvillea is going to love it. Because the more soil that I add, the more retention, um, moisture retention this bougainvillea is going to get. So hopefully it will give me a more dramatic bloom kind of lame right now. It's not doing a whole lot. Okay. So we're going to bring the soil up. And this is dry soil too, which is important because I'm going to be working with most, if not all, of these plants as cuttings. Now, you, you're probably saying, well, girl, you know, you could just leave it like that and top dress, uh, give the eye somewhere to rest, and it would look really good. Maybe throw you know, a piece of art, garden art, a little sphere or a, a big piece of glass or a big rock in there and then top dress around it. You know, I could, but I'm not going to because I don't want to. I have these plants. I don't have anywhere else to put them. So they're going back in. Now, my main, the main act here is this topsy-turvy, this Echeveria topsy-turvy. Um, you know, I could plant it back as a rooted plant. I'm kind of torn about that. You know, it's got all those pretty blooms on it. Ew, there's a big spider. Hey, buddy. Um, I don't know. The, the question is, can I get it to stand up? And you know what? When I look at what I have going on in here and the scale of the plants that are currently residing in the pot, I think I am going to just go ahead and dig a hole. I know, right? I just put all the soil in here. But as you guys know, I make this up as I go. So I am going to plant this as a rooted specimen. Okay, yeah, if I go deep, if I can get this down in the deep enough into the pot, oh my gosh, there's so much rock in here, then the edge of the pot, I'm hoping will kind of hold this plant up. Remember, if your succulent stands up, you've done your job. Okay, now this one that's, that's hanging, I'm just going to cut that. Look at all those little air roots. And I can simply tuck that little cutting back in anywhere I want. I think. Yeah, that looks good. Right there in the front like that. Perf. Okay, then I have this little Aeonium Herbicum. I'm going to work that in in the back because I don't want it to get any sun while it's rerooting. And this is a really perfect little 
plant ICU back here. Pull in lots and lots of extra soil. And then I'll just set that Aeonium basically right on top. Now I have this Fred Ives. Way too stemmy, way too leggy. Cut that off. And I will pop Fred right in here. That's cute. And then these Grapto's, same thing. Just fill in with them. Remember, no dirt showing. I brought around some top dressing rock, but I may not even need it. These Grapto's are so, so tough. I'm not worried about them catching sun in the afternoon. It is not gonna be an issue at all. That's cute. That's one of the little topsy-turvy hybrids. Then, you know, that looks, already looks 100% better. Um, but I still feel like I've got some gaps. So this is a giant pot too. Lots and lots of soil needed to backfill in here. Okay. All right. Now I can take some of these Aeonium Kiwi. Remember, Kiwi being one of the tougher of the Aeoniums. And eventually it'll get leggy, but it's going to take a minute because I cut it. So I can put it right here and it'll stay like that for months to come. Now I might get a little bit of bruising on the underside of the leaves or even on the top of the leaves since it is a cutting, but that will only be cosmetic. And this is just gonna be the plant that I use as a filler in areas where I see dirt. And this is the whole candle and the birthday cake thing. Uh, you're not limited either to just the plants that you had in the pot. If you want to go cruising through your garden and find some other plants that could use some pruning, lacing, thinning, um, you sure can do that. Here's a little ghosty. I'll put that little ghosty right here. So, you know, now I've reached a point in the process where, one, I need to stand up and take a look. And, ugh. That's a hot mess. Yeah, no, I don't like these in here at all. Better. 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 Yep. All right. Yeah, that perspective, I'm liking this a whole lot more. So... Let's just go ahead and top dress. Sometimes less is more. And I just thought, those, I didn't like the way those kiwis looked. Okay, so I'll find new homes for those in the gutters or somewhere else. You know, just, just to give you an idea too of what I'm talking about, if you want to go over there, Greg, and show them the kiwi that are right at the edge of the patio that are so yellow and just really doing their thing. You know, what a fabulous plant in the right spot. And over here, they were getting a little too much shade. They weren't really showing off. Um, you know, the colors are kind of, kind of not so great. So these will go in the gutters, probably over on that side of the garden so that they can color up and get to work. So I chose, I chose Creva this time for my top dressing because I had a little left from a project I was working on yesterday. So I knew I wouldn't need much. And you know, the top dressing really just, just makes it. Then, 
I know what you're asking. Well, you put, you know, you put plants in there as cuttings. Did I, or did I take them out? Well, actually, the only cuttings that I have in here are the graptocetums, the ghosties, and those don't care. So when are you going to water? You know, i got to keep the bougainvillea going. Well, first of all, this is a very large, deep pot, so I don't need to water this bougainvillea all that often. And, oops, below where... You know, down here, it's still damp. I watered this in really good yesterday, and then I topped with dry soil. So these cuttings aren't going to make contact with that damp or wet soil midway down the pot that's supporting the bougainvillea. So I'm not worried about that, and I won't put any water on this for at least a week to give those a chance to callus, the cuttings that I did use. Do I need it anywhere else, Greg? No, I think you got it. You think I got it? Okay, I'm going to stand up and take a look. And expect, you know, the plants that you manipulated and worked with as cuttings to shrink a little bit, too. Actually, can see dirt right there. The uh, top dressing rock also helps conserve water. It holds water in and also suppresses weeds. All bonuses. All right. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I love this. I'm so glad that I chose the Creva for this. I really like it. I don't think I've done Creva in here before. Yeah, those are little cuttings right here. Okay. Then, before you, you know, say I'm done for the day, clean up after yourself. Throw away all your detritus. Move any plants that you've decided that you don't didn't want to use when you remarked your pot over to an area, your designated garden of death, where it's shady and dry until you decide what you want to do. Um, sometimes you don't know what you want to do right away, and if you wait until inspiration strikes, you can just go over and grab your plants at any time. So all of these guys will go over right now to my garden of death to so that I can figure out what I'm going to do with them later because I've got to go I'm pulling plants and rocks for a reno a little uh, garden renovation that I'm working on tomorrow in Coronado so I don't want to really deal with this I don't have the time to deal with it right now so yeah we'll just clean up we'll move all that off to the side and get on with our day but what an incredibly rewarding little process that was thank you so much for joining me today on your succulent tip get out in your garden get to work identify a pot or an area that really needs some some help and um, make something look good thank you guys so much for joining me uh, thanks for subscribing for liking and sharing this video this has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity in my backyard with your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.